Revive. My name is Jamie, and I'm the Revive Young Adult Minister at Hope's West Des Moines campus, and we are so glad that you are here tonight. And I'm Ashley Lentz, an intern pastor and connections coordinator and heading up Revive at our Hope Ankeny campus. And it is so great to be here with you this evening. We have been praying for you and don't believe it's an accident you are joining us. Tonight starts the beginning of our 10th birthday celebration as Revive. Revive is turning 10 this month in September and we have some really awesome things in store for you. We are so excited. There is a chance, perhaps, that we will be able to worship again with you in person, but you have to stay tuned till the end of the message to hear more details on that. So stick with us. See you soon. Our scripture reading for tonight comes from Romans 6, 1 through 6. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of our Father, now we also live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that in sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. The word of the Lord. Our thanks be to God. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Richards and I am the Revive Young Adult Minister at Hope's West Des Moines campus and we are here on the chapel stage at Hope West Des Moines and this is where Revive started 10 years ago this week. And my name is Chris Kimston. I'm the Young Adult and Missions Minister at the Des Moines campus. And I was actually a freshman in college on the launch team when Revive launched 10 years ago. So during this birthday month, where we're celebrating Revive's 10th birthday, myself, Chris, and then Ashley Lentz are all joining forces for all three campuses of Revive's, West Des Moines, Des Moines, and Ankeny, and we're so excited to celebrate all together for this birthday season. It's going to be so much fun, and you're going to want to stay tuned for all of the fun things that we have in store for you this birthday month, because you are Revive. Without you, there would be no Revive. There would be nothing to celebrate. So we're so excited to celebrate together what God has been doing through Revive in your life and many other lives just like yours for the last 10 years. So as we turn 10 years old, we wanted to just mark a couple of the really incredible things that have happened. Like, for example, in 2010, Revive launched. It was the very first Revive that existed on the planet, and there were young adults that would drive for like an hour to get here on Thursday nights. When I started, I would meet some of them, and my mind was blown that I would meet people that would drive from so far away. So um, after several years of Revive being launched, we had a podcast that got started, and that way people could listen from wherever they wanted to the message portion of Revive. Then how many years ago did Revive Des Moines start? We started as small groups like three years ago, but we've been doing worship for a couple of years now. Yeah. yeah. It's been almost three years. So then Revive expanded from just one campus to multiple campuses mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And then in a pandemic, Hope Ankeny has launched Revive. We're so excited about that. And also in this pandemic, all three of these Revive ministries have launched their own YouTube channels. And we know, looking at our analytics from those YouTube channels, that people are tuning in not just from Iowa, but also New York and Australia. So <laughs> there's so much to celebrate and God has been up to some really cool things. But here's the thing, Revive. Here's the thing. I feel like what a year for Revive to be celebrating its 10th birthday. As we look back and look forward, I think that this is not just a milestone birthday, but this is a pivotal birthday. And I feel like God is going to do even cooler things in the next 10 years than God has done Definitely. over the past 10 years. So we're really excited to be launching into a new season for Revive. And so that is why we are celebrating this month with a sermon series about decade-defining decisions. What are the decisions that define a decade? not just for Revive, but for you and me. So as you think about decisions that you have made that have really defined a long season of your life, 
Those are going to be the things that we're talking about. For example, when I think about my life, there's one decision that for sure stands out as a decade-defining decision. I was a freshman in college, very similar to you being on the launch team, and now look at you now. Who'd have thunk? Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. When I was a freshman in college, I decided to work at a summer camp called Riverside. I'd never even been there before I started working there. And it's because of my time at that summer camp that I decided to go into ministry. It's because of my relationships that I built there that I got connected to the Seattle job, and I moved to Seattle after college for six and a half years. And it's because of the relationships that I had at Riverside that I got connected here at Hope. So... I didn't know it at the time, but that one decision as a freshman in college to work at a summer camp that I'd never been to because I felt like it would be cool and God was calling it to me, calling me to it, that defined the next 10 years of my life. So we are going to be talking about decade-defining decisions, and we are starting tonight with talking about (laughs) disastrous decisions. There's all sorts of decisions that we make, disastrous, difficult, daring. We're going to talk about so many of them. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're talking about disastrous decisions. We're not just talking about like, you roll up to a red light and you realize while you're picking your nose mindlessly, you look over and the person that you're like crushing on or like your boss is in the car next to you and they can see you. Like that's disastrous, but that's not a decade defining disastrous decision. Or like think about the disastrous decision where you realize that you bought decaf coffee instead of normal coffee. <laughs> Day ruiner. That's Day ruiner, but not a decade ruiner. So we're going to be talking about decade defining decisions um, here tonight. Yeah, and it's true that we don't need to dwell on those decisions that we make. And like, we have to live with those decisions once we make them. It's not good to just like live in the past. But at the same time, uh, as we look back at the decisions we've made, that's how we can inform our decision-making process in the future. And while it's really fun to look back at the good decisions that we've made, the things that we learn the most from, those things that teach us the most, are those decisions that we wish we hadn't made. You see, those times where our judgment was wrong uh, or we just uh, kind of made the, r- the wrong choice that hurts ourselves or others, if we can and just look back at those moments, those are the things that are going to help us and lead us into the future. Now, we can acknowledge intellectually, you, you can say, yeah, Chris, sounds good. Like, it's going to be a good thing to do. I guess I can do that. But if I were to ask you to be emotionally honest, Does anybody want to take time out of their busy schedules to actually reflect on the painful things of their past? Absolutely not. You don't want to do that. And why? Because it sounds not fun. It sounds terrible. But uh, the reason that it sounds terrible is actually a human thing as well, because we hold so much guilt and shame over the decisions that we make in the past. We hold so much guilt and shame over ourselves and others for the displaying our own brokenness and all of the mistakes that we make. But the, whole, the important thing is, is that the God that made you doesn't hold that over you. It's important to acknowledge as we start this discussion tonight that we have to give ourselves grace because the God that we're worshiping and that we're talking about and that we're following is that God of grace and will lead us into making better decisions. If we can just take a step back, have grace for ourselves and for others, then we might be able to find our way kind of out of that shame place and be able to see kind of where God is leading us out of it. So the first thing to remember, well, actually, let's first, let's all take a deep breath. (sighs) Okay, now that we've done that, the first thing to remember is that we all make mistakes. We've all made them. We all wish that we would have done something different, whether it's the small thing like picking your nose at a a stoplight um, or whether it's something uh, that, really uh, ruin a relationship or uh, kind of set your life in a different trajectory. Um, We are all broken people, but um, that's just human brokenness. And unfortunately, we don't have anything to learn from the Bible about that because it's full of perfect people. Actually, no. So the Bible is full of people. The Bible is essentially a story of people making terrible decisions and God redeeming people and leading them out of those terrible decisions. Um, Bringing us closer to God's self and to each other. Yes. So as Chris said, the Bible is chock full of people making disastrous decisions. So think, for example, about David. He became a king in the Old Testament. And there's a story that we see where everyone else is off to war and David, for whatever reason, didn't go with them. And he saw one of his best friend's wives 
and slept with her. Now, when I say best friend, what I mean is Uriah, this friend, was one of David's mighty men. These were renowned warriors who would take not a bullet, but an arrow for David at any point in time, who fought at David's side and for David all the time. And so for David, he just made this disastrous decision to sleep with one of his closest friend's wives. And then in order to cover everything up, he ended up murdering this friend um, to make sure that everything uh, was okay disastrous relationship decision. Sarah in the Old Testament also made a disastrous relationship decision when she decided to, um, when she and her husband weren't able to have children on their own, she had her handmaid sleep with Abraham and it just created this huge rift in their family that they never seemed to recover from. We make disastrous relationship decisions, not unlike David and Sarah. Or also think about Saul, who is later renamed Paul. Paul thought, Saul thought that he was on the right side of history mm -hmm. and was murdering followers of Jesus because he thought that he knew the right version of truth. And then he has this encounter with Jesus, everything changes, and then Jesus redeems Saul, renames him Paul, and Paul goes on to write half of the New Testament and is a huge reason why people are Christians today. Um, but he made some pretty disastrous decisions when it came to what he believed was the truth. Think about Moses. He made a disastrous spiritual decision when he decided to disobey a direct order from God in a, in a moment of anger and frustration, and it resulted in him not being able to actually lead the Hebrew people into the promised land after they'd been wandering in the desert for 40 years. God, God did him lead him up onto a mountain so he could at least look over like down into the land, but he wasn't able to go in because he made a disastrous spiritual decision. Noah made another family decision that was terrible. Um, with alcohol, he got drunk and ended up dishonoring his family. Think about Solomon, who was one of the wisest people ever. And at the end of his life, just kind of threw it all away, made some terrible relationship decisions, squandered a bunch of stuff, and then just kind of ended up a cynic, um, which is still a gift to all of us that his letters um, and book of being a cynic is still included in scripture. But it wasn't maybe peak Solomon, what, what peak Solomon could have looked like. And then finally think about Samson. Talk about misusing your skills. He just, he threw away the gifts that God had for him and kind of squandered them all over the place. So there's many, many more all over scripture. Those are just some of the highlights um, if you were to just flip through scripture and take a quick look. But the good news is, is that even in the middle of all of those disastrous decisions that they made, God still used them to teach every single one of us for the last 2,000 years plus about God's unconditional love, grace, forgiveness, and how God can transform and redeem any story, including someone like Saul who was killing Christians. So just like it says in Romans chapter 8, mm -hmm. we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose for them. So Chris, how does God work through those disastrous decisions that we make? We're making this very, uh, we're making them tongue twisters so that you can say them at home. <laughs> disastrous decisions. And uh, a little bit about the name Revive to answer your question. It's funny because like, if you think of Revive, maybe you think of the service at West Des Moines on Thursdays, service at West Des Moines on Tuesday. Maybe you think of your, your friends who help lead the podcast and that you're in life groups with up in Ankeny. Uh, Maybe you're thinking of a hope thing, but revive, spoiler alert, means something different than just a hope ministry. I know. Uh, the definition, a definition of revive is actually coming from a place of death to a place of life, a place of brokenness to a place of wholeness. That's what it means to be revived. And that's what God wants for you in your decisions is to be taken from a place of death to a place of life, to make your decisions life-giving to yourself and to others. And so, uh, what does it mean to be revived out of bad decisions? Honestly, I think of decisions this way. I am a, a, a visual person, so maybe this will be helpful for you. There's a thing called a decision tree, and uh, it goes a little something like this. So picture there's a decision that you have to make. Here it is. And you a lot of times it's more than just two, but we'll go for the sake of things here. Let's say it's down between two decisions. You can make decision A or decision B. And one thing you'll notice if you kind of continue on in time or look back at the decisions that you've made is that those decisions allowed you to make other decisions down the road. And all of a sudden, you end up in a different place 
based off of those original decisions that you make. Now, an important thing is, a lot of people think that making a godly decision or, or following God's will for your life looks like somehow trying to like decode something where, okay, well, this is the right decision and then this way and then this way. And if you make enough right decisions in your life, then at the end, you get to meet God. As if God is the million dollar prize at the end of like Plinko. Do people know Plinko? Okay, good. Bob Barker. Yeah, there you go. Um, a lot of people think of it this way. Instead, if we look at decisions through a different lens, this might seem silly, but this is the way that a lot of us think, especially when we're under pressure. If we look through a little bit different of a lens, what we'll realize is that God is not a destination or a location or a situation somewhere else. God is instead with us in whatever decision that we could make. God is present with us through it all. People have long tried to run away from God. And then people are always surprised when it doesn't work. They're like, why couldn't I run away from God? It's because, and this is for us today as well, we so regularly associate God with a place We associate God with a situation or a certain demographic of people that all of a sudden God becomes less than the universe creating God that God is and instead becomes something much less. But instead, let's look at God as that being that is with us, that knows us, that loves us and leads us no matter who we are. Now, we can laugh at Jonah as the, maybe the popular example. I'm actually going to try to put physical distance between myself and the God that's called me to do something I don't want to do. We can laugh at that and say that's ridiculous, but we try to do things in those same exact ways. Instead of asking God questions about what God might think about our particular situation, we suppress those emotions and try to pretend that everything's fine. Instead of dealing with our problems directly, something that we do is we distract ourselves with coping mechanisms, with substances, uh, or we try to even escape. We try to uh, check out and go somewhere else. And we even do this with things like sermons or retreats or worship music. A good check is, if you're listening to a sermon or a worship music, is that meaning something to you the rest of your life or are you just using it to try to emotionally escape from thinking or dealing with something that you should? Is it directing your life or is it distracting your life? Another way that we do this is instead of integrating faith into our everyday life, we often have our church selves and our uh, everyday selves as if they're like different Instagram filters or something. And a lot of people might wonder, man, why isn't the church stuff that I've been learning just doesn't seem to match up with my life? Well, a lot of times it's because we're trying to be different people. These are all different ways that we try to put distance between ourselves and God. Now, It's important to remember, like, God is not necessarily actively supporting and endorsing every decision that we make. But the important thing that I hope that you hear is this. No decision that we could make would ever make God not pursue us. There's no decision we could make somewhere up here that all of a sudden God's like, no, I'm out. You're on your own with this one. God continues to pursue us, to find us, and to try to lead us into something better. Revival is about something that happens now. (laughs) So does this mean that if God is with us in whatever decision we make, that we can just go around making terrible decision after terrible decision and just expect that God will do the cleanup work afterwards? Like the image that comes to mind is, I don't know, well, I do know about you, but I, <laughs> I do know where you were raised. I was raised in central Iowa and we have small town parades all the time. And so there's all these like horses that are in the parade. And what do horses do in parades? They poop. And so what, do, what needs to happen after the parade is done? Well, in my hometown, they have little people, not little people, that sounds very strange. There were just people dressed in clown costumes who would come at the end of the parade and would shovel up all of the horse poop. One would think clowns had other things to do, but. <laughs> I'm assuming that someone didn't want to do it and someone said, here, wear a clown costume, it will be better. 
Anyway, so in my town, there's people who come in after the horses and shovel yeah. up all the poop. That's not necessarily what <laughs> we're talking about here. Right. You're not just a horse doing your life, pooping mm -hmm. everywhere and expecting God to come up and do the cleanup work afterwards. That's not what we're talking about here. Paul, who we've already talked about tonight, writes very clearly and passionate about this, passionately about this in the book of Romans. And he says, well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now also we may live new lives. So since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised with him in the life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. So our decisions don't necessarily define us in God's eyes. God will do anything, absolutely anything to relentlessly chase after you, no matter what disastrous decision that he has done so that he can redeem or revive you and bring you into the new life that God has for you. Always, 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 no matter what. So because of Jesus, redemption is God's plan A. You can't mess up so badly that God will just give up and, as Chris said, just tell you you're on your own. So when we get to say yes to God's redemption, we get to give him that shame that we might feel, the guilt that we might feel about those disastrous decisions, and let God transform them. So Revive, as we wrap up tonight, we have a challenge for you. Our challenge for you is to think about your um, life. I'll give you two options. Think about your life in terms of this decision tree that Chris drew. So you have two options. Option one is a little bit longer term. Think about your life over the past six months with COVID. Draw out a major decisions tree and then Ask God to show you where he has showed up in that decision tree. If that feels like it's too much for you, you don't want to go back through the whole six months, maybe you just do option two and you think about the past week. Make a decision tree of the past week and do the same thing. Ask God, where did you show up in my life? And then ask the Holy Spirit to come and believe that God will reveal things to you that God wants to teach you um, about the decisions that we make in our lives. Because who knows, you might be making a decade-defining decision today or tomorrow or this weekend or sometime very soon, not to put extra weight on it, but to just invite us into the goodness that God has for us. So um, Chris, with that, would you mind praying to close us? Of course. Lord God, we thank you for being with us in all those tough spaces. God, I pray as we make decisions, whether we think they're small or whether they feel so big that we don't know what to do, Lord, help us to feel your presence. Help us to know that your love is not contingent upon the outcome of our decisions, but instead we have the opportunity to draw close to you wherever we happen to be. God, help us to listen to your wisdom. Help us to lead, listen to your leading. Listen to your spirit as we continually walk this path of life with you. God, thank you for constantly redeeming us wherever we are, whether this season's been, I mean, this season's been hard for a lot of us, but whether this is just a weird season or whether this is something that we don't quite know how we're gonna get out of here in 2020. Lord, I just pray that we would take heart in your presence, the place you're leading us. Lord, we thank you for being good and using us to love others on that journey as well. So Lord, just give us eyes to see and ears to hear those around us and strong feet to walk whatever path is in front of us, knowing that you walk it with us. We thank you, Jesus, and we love you. It's in your good name that we pray. Amen. All right, Revive, let's continue with worship. And as we do, I just want us to think about in the midst of the difficult decisions and the choices that there are to make in this life, I want us to know that we can rely on the peace that comes with knowing the Lord and spending time with him. So that's why we have this moment. We have this moment to worship and to praise him and to bring glory to him. And realize that it's not all about us and though there are important things that we need to do, choices that we need to make, that it's more about him than it is about us. 
and his peace can guide us. So let his peace guide you and lean into the loving arms of the Lord.
souls. God, we pray that you will be at the front of our mind always. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you to Levi for leading us in worship. Thank you, Zoe, so much for being here from Ankeny. It's so good to worship with you, especially in this room. So thank you so much for being here. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Here's the news that we have for you about Revive coming back together in person this fall. We have been planning and hoping and praying and dreaming, and COVID is COVID. So here's what we can tell you as of today. We would love to have you mark your calendars for Thursday, September 17th for an all three campus in-person Revive birthday bash and fall Woo! kickoff. So save the date. Here's the thing. We don't feel confident yet enough about numbers um, with COVID numbers spiking in Iowa over the past week to give you exact details about the where and the time, but we are hoping that it will be able to happen um, most likely outside at this point, let's be honest. So um, yeah. we will give you all the details that we possibly can next week, but this week our invitation for you is to just simply mark that date on your calendar and we would love, love, love to see you on that date if you feel comfortable coming in person. Yes, and in the meantime, we have three connection opportunities that you can sign up for right now. The first of those is Alpha. If you have not taken Alpha, I highly encourage you to take it. Jamie and I have both taken Alpha. It is a course here at Hope. Uh, it's actually around the world. Uh, we offer it here at Hope all the time because it helps you dive into your faith. And if you have already taken Alpha, Jamie has more opportunities for you. If you've already taken Alpha, we have a class for you called after Alpha. After Alpha dives a little bit further into questions that you might have about the Bible and about prayer and how we grow in faith. And so you can check the dates and times on your screen and we will have the signups for Alpha and After Alpha, all of our classes in our Instagram bio. And then the third class for you is something that's called Be the Bridge 101. There's a lot of racial tension in our country and in our world today. And we know that one of the best things that we can do is to continue to grow and learn how we can be agents of God's peace and bridge builders in this time. And so it's a four-week class designed for people like you and me who just want to know more and want to learn and grow in a, in a, in a good environment. And so it's on Monday evenings, and you can sign up in our Instagram bio. And then Ashley... Hit us with some yes. serving opportunities. There's some service opportunities also coming up. You can uh, help pack meals at Meals from the Heartland. The date and time are on the screen right now. So you can go ahead and sign up for that if that's something that you are excited about and would be interested in. And second, we have a Habitat for Humanity builds still happening all around the metro area. So if you'd like to chip in to help build some houses, that would be amazing. And you can sign up for that opportunity as well. 
Yep. And then the last thing that we wanted to tell you about tonight is that if you have interest in hosting a small group this fall, be it, um, and we're doing interest-based small groups this fall, hopefully. So if you play Frisbee golf and you want to play on a regular basis with other people who also love to play Frisbee golf, then let me know. If you want to read a book together and study either a Bible study or a book about life or adulting or dating or whatever, um, we would love to resource you. So we don't have group signups yet. We're just recruiting leaders. So if you feel the tug um, from God on your heart to say, hey, I kind of want to know more about what that might look like, feel free to just email us at revive at hopewdm.org and we can walk through training and what that might look like for you Um, because we would love to set you up for success if you feel like that's what God is leading you to. So that's all. Those are all the announcements we have for you. Thank you so much for joining us this week. See you next week.